For many people, a caravan by the seaside is the traditional British holiday dream. And those who are lucky enough to own a fixed caravan or lodge often plow lots of time and money into creating a cosy home from home. But for some owners, that idyllic situation is under threat because the owners of the land their holiday homes stand on have decided to change the rules. Jane and Graham Fothergill from Sittingbourne in Kent are among Britain's over one million caravanners. Yeah. Oh, look at your static vans. Yeah. The old curtains, floral. I know. The couple, who own a small family-run cleaning company, bought their static caravan for £17,000 in 2018. And this is the mackerel we caught fresh. Cooking outside, yeah. yeah. With high hopes of reliving the years of family holidays they'd had when their children were young. Our children are grown up now and we have three little grandchildren and we thought it would be so nice to do the same with them and for us as well, obviously. One of the biggest draws was the site itself, Ashcroft Coast Holiday Park in Essex. The attraction, particularly with the new caravan, was all the free entertainment, the swimming pools and everything else that's involved with the uh, park. On top of the initial cost of the nine-year-old caravan, the Ashcroft Coast site came with annual fees of £4,000. For the self-employed couple, this was affordable if they could spread it across the year. At the time that we bought it and on our contract, it said that we could pay by direct debit over the 12 months, which for us, having our own business, cash flow can be up and down, um, and that's easy for us because we can budget for that. Um, and that, again, was part of the appeal, um, so that's what we signed up to. And all went well for three years of happy vacationing, until that was September 2021, when a letter arrived from Ashcroft Coast Holiday Park. It announced that for caravans over 10 years old, which Jane and Graham's now was, owners would have to pay their annual site fees up front in a lump sum rather than split it over the year as a monthly cost, leaving the couple scrambling to raise the money. We had to find £4,000, over £4,000 up front. Just, a, just after Christmas, which, uh, you know, for a, a small business like us, it's uh, quite tough. But we bought the caravan on the strength of it, buying it Absolutely. monthly. Absolutely, yeah. It suddenly come up with a four grand bill. It's just, it's just ooh. Jane and Graham complained to Cosgrove Leisure Parks, which owns the site, about the change in rules. And after two letters to the management went unanswered, Jane took a third one into the office to hand to the general manager. He basically said, we've just got to go along with it. We can either pay up front or... Or face eviction. Face eviction. And it wasn't just Jane and Graham left struggling. They were soon in touch with other unhappy residents. Graham has requested, repeatedly requested via email that we have a meeting with the owners because if you could see it, so many people were unhappy. So unhappy that Jane and Graham say a number felt they had to simply sell up. In those early days, in that first month, there must have been countless people that just walked away from their caravans and mm. just had to leave it all behind. A Facebook group that Graham had set up continued to be used as a forum for the caravan owners to discuss their options. But after the story was picked up by the local newspaper, Cosgrove Leisure Parks sent the couple a letter which left them in shock. I wish to inform you that we will not be renewing oh, your yeah. site licence mm -hmm. for the up and coming year 2022. You are bringing the company into disrepute and causing too much negativity on park amongst the other owners. Your Facebook page is toxic towards the company. We're, we're so upset about it because the one thing that we've tried to do on our Facebook site is support everybody. We've been told that we've got to move out and that they will take our caravan and leave it outside reception. Jane and Graham are determined to fight but they say their time at the caravan has been ruined. It's just taken all the joy out of it, and whereas initially we, we loved it, we loved it over there, and now it just started to feel tainted. It's, got, and... it's very sour now, isn't it? Mm. It's a sour taste in your mouth. We tried to contact Cosgrove Leisure Parks about all this, but our letters, calls and emails went unanswered. 
This isn't the first time we've heard from owners of static caravans whose beloved holiday homes are under threat after the actions of the site owners. Last year, we met Simon Mullins, who was faced with having to sell his caravan altogether when the site managers where his was located banned any caravan over 22 years old. The only options that I'm left with now is to, is to either upgrade um, or, or walk away and leave the site. After months trying to fight the decision, in November 2021, Simon felt he had no choice but to sell the caravan. He accepted £2,500 for it, despite it having cost him far more to buy and renovate it over the years. For me personally, it's very disappointing and it's very upsetting. Um, it does make you angry as well. There's currently no formal regulation for Britain's 365,000 static holiday caravans which means that site owners can change or impose new terms and conditions on their tenants with little or no oversight, and there's no formal arbitration process when the two sides disagree. A national campaign group representing thousands of owners is calling on the Competition and Markets Authority to introduce greater protections for caravan owners, many of which, it says, face increasingly unpredictable costs. Among them is Robert Leck from Hartlepool, who first bought a caravan at the Flamingo Land theme park in North Yorkshire in 2015. This ride, you queue for hours to get on it, and the kids absolutely loved it, it was great. When you look back at the, the photographs from when the children were small, it just brings back so many happy memories that all of us had together as a family. It's been really a great place to go for a long, long time. Robert paid £27,000 for the caravan, which fast became a home from home. You've got a full kitchen, you've, you've got nice beds to sleep in, you know, you've got a living room, a sitting room with a TV if, if the weather's inclement. And when the pitch next door came available in 2020, Robert jumped at the chance to buy it, to let out to other holiday makers. We bought the second van and that including the decking, uh, cost us £41,000. To let Robert rent out the caravan, Flamingo Land charged a sublet fee of £1,000, which Robert recouped across the year from the van's rental income. But in November 2021, without any warning, the park substantially increased the fee. The sublet licence, uh, that had a 100% increase. So instead of £1,000 for the year, it was going up to £2,000. And I was quite disappointed about such a level of increase. There's a lot of owners who I believe, you know, that that was like a big, a big sort of blow, I would think, such a huge increase in sublet fee. For Robert, the doubling cost of sublet fees means he has reluctantly decided to sell his second caravan, as many other owners have. Some owners have decided to pursue a legal challenge, questioning the right of the park owners to increase the fees in the way that they did. And they thought it, it was unfair. They thought that in increase was unfair. The 100% increase did not come with an explanation as to why it was £1,000 on top of what we already pay. When we spoke to Flamingo Land, it told us that it always follows the industry association's best practice advice. Regarding the increase in sublet fees, it said that broader economic factors, such as the pandemic and rising fuel costs were to blame, as well as the millions of pounds it was spending on upgrades to the park, including a world-class roller coaster. It pointed out that Robert didn't have to pay the increase if he chose not to sublet his caravan, but instead used it himself. And it insisted its sublet offer is still one of the most generous within the industry, saying that no other similar park allows caravan owners to manage their own sublet or keep such a large part of their rental fees. It added that it was now offering an early payment discount of £300 for subletters, 
but would support any owner with transportation who instead chose to move their caravan to another site. Solicitor Aisha Nea says you can challenge changes you believe are unfair, even if they appear to be within the terms and conditions of the contract. The sale of mobile homes is governed by contract law. So if there's a term within the contract that allows for prices to be increased annually, then this will be allowed as long as it was made clear at the start. Now, what you can't do is at that stage as a park owner impose unfair terms. Aisha believes the lack of a mediator in the holiday caravan industry needs to be addressed. At the moment, if there's a dispute between a caravan owner and a park owner, then there's nobody to mediate between them. The only recourse they have is to go to the county court. Now, if there was a mediator, an independent body, that would save a lot of stress, heartache and legal costs in the long run. But even without that support, Aisha says there are measures caravan owners can take. If you want to challenge an increase in fees and make your objections clear, ask for a justification from the park owner. You can suggest mediation. If that doesn't work or it's not taken up, you can start county court proceedings for breach of contract. Well, Robert and his family still hold Flamingo Land dear to their hearts, despite having to let go of the second caravan. The main thing to get across is just how much we love as a family going to Flamingo Land. It's a really nice place to go, but with the increase in fees that we've seen for this year, it has sort of taken a little bit of the shine off, off everything.